Hello and welcome to part two of our lecture series on the male reproductive system and in part two we're going to focus in on the duct system which is going to be involved with uh, taking the sperm cells which, uh, that were produced by the seminiferous tubules uh, and essentially ultimately delivering them into the female reproductive system uh, to allow for internal fertilization. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at with the duct system are going to be structures associated with uh, both the transport of the spermatozoa, uh, but also uh, very important roles in both the storage and maturation of the spermatozoa as it's passing through this system. Now the important thing to keep in mind is, uh, in this case we get the seminiferous tubules uh, over here on this diagram to the right, uh, here in the, the area is kind of three, uh, you can see them as, as kind of yellowish structures. Um, everything else uh, within this diagram are going to be uh, the duct systems uh, that we're going to be talking about. Everything within the male reproductive system, from the seminiferous tubules to the duct systems to the accessory glands, require circulating testosterone for normal function. And so we talked about the Leydig cells in the previous lecture, those interstitial cells, uh, which under the stimulation of luteinizing hormone are going to be secreting uh, testosterone. Um, we need to maintain adequate levels of testosterone to have functioning of the male reproductive system. If we take a look at the duct system, uh, again we're going to see a, an epithelial lining throughout uh, the entire duct system, which is a primary role uh, as a secretory epithelium in uh, providing the spermatozoa with nutrients because again these are, are viable cells, they're living cells uh, that are essentially passing through this duct system. Uh, they're going to be here for an extended period of time and so they're going to be dependent upon uh, nutrients that are provided to them by the epithelial lining. Now the first of these structures we're going to take a look at are going to be the tubuli recti. Uh, the tubuli recti are going to be straight tubules. Uh, they're going to start out with an epithelium that looks very similar to the seminiferous tubules. Uh, so that stratified seminiferous epithelium that we saw in the previous lecture series. Uh, but ultimately, we're going to see the spermatogenic cells, the cells that are able to divide and differentiate it into spermatozoa, are, are going to be lost. And the only things that can be left behind are going to be the Sertoli cells. And so what we're going to see is primarily a, a simple cuboidal or uh, in some cases, the simple columnars were grading from the seminiferous tubules into uh, the tubuli recti, uh, but primarily a simple cuboidal epithelium surrounded by a dense connective tissue sheath. And so what you're going to see is uh, recognize that you're in the testes uh, because of the presence of seminiferous tubules, but then you're going to see simple cuboidal line structures surrounded by dense connective tissue uh, support, uh, but they're going to be relatively straight. And so because they're relatively straight, this is going to be an indication that we're looking at straight tubules and looking at the tubuli recti. Now the reedy testes are going to be the next region along this, this passageway. And so we're going to have uh, the straight tubules dumped into this anastomosing network. And so we're going to see our tubules coming together within the mediastinum region of the testes. Um, and so what we're going to have is the same basic setup as what we had in the straight tubules, but we're going to have uh, uh, essentially this anastomosis network. We're going to have all of these tubes coming together and essentially funneling the spermatozoa into essentially a fewer number of lumens. And so the reedy testis is going to be lined by a, lo a, yeah, a low cuboidal epithelium, still with a lot of connective tissue within the wall, no smooth muscle present. Uh, but it's going to be characterized and different from the straight tubules by the fact that we've got this anastomosing network. The efferent ducules, uh, or ductuli uh, efferentes, are going to be characterized by the fact that we're going to have, um, instead of a simple cuboidal epithelium, we're going to have some tall columnar cells and some short cuboidal cells. And so the presence of these tall cells and short cells is going to get a kind of a scalloped or kind of bumpy appearance to the lumen. Uh, the tall columnar cells are going to have cilia along their surface, and like we've seen with cilia in other regions of uh, the body, the cilia being present are going to be able to be motile, and they're going to be able to propel the spermatozoa. You can keep in mind that at this point, the spermatozoa are not capable of forward motility. They can't swim on their own at this point, but they need to be propelled through this system. 
So uh, the tall columnar ciliated cells are going to be propelling them. The short cuboidal cells are going to have microvilli along their surface, and you're going to be absolved with uh, absorbing materials uh, from the lumen. We look at the wall structure, uh, so we've got the kind of scalloped appearance to the lumen uh, because of the endothelial or epithelial cells. Uh, we're going to find uh, small amounts of smooth muscle within the wall structure. Again, the smooth muscle, again, to be able to contract and regulate the flow of materials through here. The ductus epididymis uh, is going to be uh, a relatively long region within this tract system. It's going to be lined by a pseudostratified columnar epithelia. Um, so it's similar to the pseudostratified columnar epithelia that we've seen uh, previously. All of the cells are going to be sitting on the basement membrane or the basal lamina if we look at an electron microscopy, but not all the cells reach to the surface. Uh, we're going to see apical projections from this, but in this case, we're going to see abundant stereocilia. And in this case, remember, stereocilia are not true cilia. Uh, in essence, what they are are going to be long, irregular structures with microvilli as their core. And so they don't have uh, the ability to essentially move like true cilia with uh, the microtubule cores. Uh, and so we can look at this, we're going to see spermatozoa within the lumen. We're going to see pseudostratified columnar epithelia. We see stereocilia along the surface. Uh, and then we take a look at the wall structure. We're going to see circular smooth muscle, which is going to be gradually thickening uh, as it goes down along the length of the ductus epididymis. Now, the spermatozoa are going to be stored within the ductus epididymis for an extended period of time, and it's within the ductus epididymis that uh, the spermatozoa become capable of forward motility. And so they, in essence, uh, become a little bit more mature than when they were released, and the flagella are capable of moving on their own. Now, they're going to be stored within the ductus epididymis, and then they're going to be passed through the ductus deferens or vas deferens. If we take a look at the lining of the vas deferens, we're going to see a pseudostratified columnar epithelia, uh, much, much fewer stereocilia. Uh, but what's going to be characterized is we're going to have relatively few folds within uh, the ductus deferens or the vas deferens. Uh, but when we take a look at this, we're going to see spermatozoa within the, the epithelial lining a pseudostratified columnar epithelia, not a whole lot of stereocilia, uh, they're going to be present there. But if we take a look at outside of that, we're going to see lots and lots and lots and lots of smooth muscle cells. Uh, the vas deferens is the most muscular tube in the body in relationship to the diameter of the lumen. And so we take a look at this, we're going to have three distinct layers of smooth muscle surrounding uh, the lumen of the vas deferens. Now the vas deferens is going to deliver the spermatozoa into the ejaculatory duct. Uh, so the ejaculatory duct is formed by the junction of the ductus deferens, the vas deferens, with a duct coming from the seminal vesicle. And so it's in essence uh, going to be combining spermatozoa with the secretions from the seminal vesicles um, and then combining them as it's passing through the prostate gland. And so as it's passing through that, we're going to be adding the secretions from the prostate as well. And so we're going to be delivering uh, the spermatozoa, the sperm cells, with a lot of secretory products, which are going to be involved with helping enhance the function of the spermatozoa, as well as improving their survival. And so uh, as it's passing from the ejaculatory duct, it's going to go into uh, the urethra. And again, we've talked about the urethra before. Uh, the epithelia is going to vary from a transitional to a stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, as it's passing uh, through uh, the penile structure. Uh, remember that when we talked about the urethra, the male urethra, that there are going to be a small mucus secreting glands within the wall. And these are glands of Lytra, uh, identified by two on the diagram uh, to the right. And again, these are going to be important because they're going to be involved with neutralizing the urine because you don't want the urine to essentially be toxic and um, damaging the spermatozoa as they're passing through uh, the, uh, the shared uh, genital urinary passage because as we're going through the urethra, uh, it's shared by the urinary system for the delivery of urine to the outside world as well as uh, with the male reproductive system, the genital portion of the genital urinary tract uh, because we're going to be delivering uh, the spermatozoa uh, into the female reproductive tract for allowing for um, internal fertilization. And then this finishes up our discussion of the, the duct system associated with the male reproductive tract. 
Uh, in part three of this lecture series, we're going to talk about the accessory glands as well as uh, the penile structure. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at rka.edu. Thank you.